Hello everyone, Yensid Organist here, and welcome to another episode of Orglecraft. Hope you guys are having a great day today. We are starting off right where we left off. How many times can I say off? <laughs> um, last time, and so trying to get this hall finished with these villagers here, who are all going to be turned into clerics. And this whole upper layer is going to be filled with cleric villagers, so that I have a good source of redstone and lapis um, and ender pearls, because, you know, I can't get those easily in the end. Um, yeah, so I am going to start by getting them all bred up. This is going to take a while. I've decided to just go with a stack of villagers. Um, so my intention is to have 64 of them, because that way I can get a ton of stuff in one pass in one day's time. If it gets a little laggy in here, well, then maybe I won't do 64. We'll just see how that goes. But I am going to get them bread and jobs and start working out, working on um, little workspaces for them. So this is probably going to take me a while, and we might work on some other things in the meantime. But let me get started with that, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, after a brief trip into the nether to get a bunch of blaze rods, I have now set up 64 uh, brewing stands so that we can get all of these villagers' jobs. And down here, in addition to the iron golem, I have two babies. This is going to take a long time. So, a uh, little bit of a shift in the plan for the episode. We're going to get to working on some other things while this is going on, and I will check back in here every morning and afternoon so that we can keep getting the villagers bred up, because um, obviously I can't really do any work in here building stalls while all of these beds are here. So, um... I'm going to get to work on a couple of other little projects for this episode. I say little projects. They're probably not going to be little projects. But the first thing that I want to do is get the super smelter that I had planned on um, a few episodes ago. I want to get that in place. And I think that I'm going to stick that in this area right here. I can't remember if I was going to put it on this side or on this side, but I'm pretty sure I was going to put it in here. Um, so I have, I, I've, I've cleaned up the design on that, so it should work a little bit better. And yeah, so let me get to work on that, and then we'll go from there. And here is our super smelter. So this is a design by Shady J. And I will link the to the um, original design and also the tutorial that I followed because I didn't follow the original video for it. Um, but yeah, 64 furnaces, and I'm currently priming it with fuel. I'm going with bamboo for right now. I know that bamboo is not the most efficient fuel. Um, and in all honesty, if you're running this... Um, you know, if your input of stuff that you want to smelt is fairly high, this is probably not going to keep up with it. Um, I've been running it for a little bit. I, okay, so there is a stack in there, so that's good. Um, but, because um, I believe, if I remember correctly, it takes four bamboo to smelt one item. Well, this is going to run out fast. What I do like about bamboo is that um, it's you're not wasting a lot when it comes to um, when it comes to smelting things. So if I like for instance, if I only have a stack of things that I want to smelt, I'm not wasting any fuel on it where you know um, whereas you know if there were coal in the system, you know, and I only ran one stack through, I'd be using you know a stack of coal for one stack of items and that's pretty inefficient. So we'll see. My smelting needs aren't huge right now. But we'll just see where it goes. So our input is over here. So if we pop over here, we can drop in a stack of chorus fruit. And it should go into the... Um, hmm. 
I think I've done this correctly. This should be my input, and it should be going into those carts down there. But it is not. I'm not sure why. Oh, you know what? Because that's not where those carts are supposed to be. All right, we're going to take this out. And let's see if I can sneak down. Where are the mine carts? Can I click on them? I cannot. I'm trying to be really careful that I don't impact the um the 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 fuel carts. There we go. Okay. So if I put that in there, is that gonna go? It is not. Okay. Um let's take this out and then need to be very, very careful here. There we go. Okay, got that one. And that one. Okay. And so then I think what I need to do is I think I need to come over here. And I think that these carts actually need to go here. Yes, there we go. And here. All right. And then if we jump up here, now this should drain. There we go. And those should go... Oh, they did not get a full stack. Those should take a full stack. So that's going to be interesting. Um, but yeah, but that will smelt up. And then all of our items get dispensed. You can see down there. And then they take a water stream. And they should... They should be coming into here, but they are not. Why are they not? Are they stuck somewhere? Well, that's interesting. Where? Oh, they got stuck there. That's interesting i did not have this problem in creative oh because that's supposed to be a block of ice that's why um hmm i don't actually know if i have any ice here in the end Let's see, where would that be? Aha, I do have a couple of ice. There we go. Uh, I probably need four of those. Because there's a couple of different places we'll need that. Okay, and then I should be able to just sneak that right in there. And same with that. Yeah, when I... um the design into a schematic it um i didn't take the lower layer because i didn't want um the sandstone so that's probably why that was a thing but then i think that let's just test if i just throw that in there that should now spit out there it goes problem solving on the fly all right excellent I still need a better way to get into this, um, <laughs> or to access the smelter, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. So that is that project done. Um, I'm going to build a little bit of a corridor that comes down from the main hallway to get here, and I might actually put a couple of access points to this, so we'll see. Um, but let's go and check on our villager situation. I admit I have not been quite as diligent as I should be in keeping up with them. Um, it appears to be nighttime. So we have, let's see, six here. Here, have some carrots. And how many do we have over 
here. I'm going to need more carrots. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have another six over here. So that's pretty good. We are getting there. Slowly but surely, I now am out of crops, so I'm going to need more of that. But we will get there and keep going. So next project to work on, I think what I want to do next is... I want to move this concrete converter because my plan, I actually want to, well, I, I still need to test um, <laughs> this and see if it's going to work, but I want to put a skulk farm in here and I want to make sure that I have the vertical height to do that. And so to make sure I have room for that, I actually want to take this and move it. And I'm just going to move it over there so it's closer to the hall. I also want to get it so that all of the um, all of the concrete blocks just get sent right back up to where I'm standing, which currently they don't. I have it on two different levels. So yeah, so I'm going to get this moved and then... Uh, probably play around with uh, Skulk Farms to see whether or not I can get this to work here in the end. The relocated concrete converter is now done and in place with a water elevator to get items back to the top. And I've just been setting up for an initial test here. I... Um, surrounded this with glass because I was having an issue with some items sometimes falling on the edge. Wasn't happening very often, but enough that it was annoying. Um, I'm hoping that the concrete will be enough to negate the TNT because when I tested uh, just a TNT, it blasted out a whole bunch of glass on the side. So, should be pretty close to this if I just pop on in here. And it broke. Sometimes it does. There we go. That's that. And all of our glass is completely safe. And then you can see our items coming up here and ending up in the chests over here. And it looks like they're getting picked up fairly evenly. So yeah, I would call this a success. Sweet. Um, been continuing to work with the villagers. I, I did run out of crops, so I had to make a little bit of a um, micro crop farm over here to be able to get um, more crops, because the, uh, the iron farm over here, not keeping up. So, as I've been working on this project, I've been thinking about some other things that I want to do, and I'm realizing that um, yeah, there's there's quite a bit more I want to do farm-wise in here. So first of all, we totally did not finish this off um, in the last episode. So we can take these out. So that is done. The Nileem farm is done. The Cleric Trading Hall we're still working on, so we'll leave that off for now. Um, but I want to go, I want to do a crop farm. Um, and basically something like I did in the industrial area where I have several tiers of farmland so that I can get stacks upon stacks of the various different resources. And I think what I'll probably do is I'll probably do um, a quad one of those so that I can be growing um, wheat and um, carrots and potatoes and beetroots all together um, and be able to harvest that whenever I want it. And then the other thing that I want is I want to do a dripstone farm. I had one back when I was working on Arendelle, but then it was, of course, in the courtyard of the castle, so I tore it down. And I realized that I have not replaced that, so I thought it would probably be a good thing to stick that in here as well. Now, I don't know if... Um, I don't know what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to get to all of these in this episode. Honestly, probably not. They're fairly easy farms to build, um, but they're also going to be fairly big, so I don't know how much time they're going to take. Um, but, yeah, the next project that I want to work on while the clerics are still going, though, is I want to put a skulk farm in, and I did find a 
farm that will work here in the end and we shouldn't have any issues with um, our um, Enderman teleporting out. So that is going to occupy this space that the concrete farm was in. So found a design by Raiseworks and I'm going to go ahead get that put in place and then we'll come back and give it a test run. And our Skulk Farm is complete. So it's a little bit of a hybrid design. Um, the, the farm itself is Ray's Works design. Um, but then I used the uh, platform that I used for the Enderman XP farm for the platform up there. So they have the ability to turn the farm on and off because that is very important for this. So... I have not tested this yet, so we're going to test it together on camera. I need to grab a, let's see here, my silk touch hoe. And I guess uh, I don't need the fortune for right now. So if we come up here, everything should be integrated to this lever here. So if I flick this on... We should see the lights turn off up there. The Enderman should come down, die, and everything should get converted. And then if I just go in here, and I should be able to just right click and hold this down. And then everything should spawn. Looks like my stone generation is not keeping up with the... Um, with the skulk production, but I guess that's it gets there eventually. So yeah, it looks like this is a success. And then of course I can go up higher if I want to get the stuff that forms on top. I have to be careful that I don't hit any of those skulk blocks because that is what um, that is what um, allows the skulk to spread lower, but. Yeah, looks like this is working. Looks like it is a success. And then we can just step out of here, turn the farm off. We'll wait for the last few Endermen to trickle in here. Don't know how many more are up there. Looks like there's one stuck. And then maybe we can go and remove the skulk sensors. Is this not an efficiency? No, it is. Okay. These just must not insta-mine. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and clean the last little bit of it out. Oh, that's right, but it's no longer generating, so... Okay, it's fine. We'll leave it there. Um, yeah, but then if we come down here, everything should be collecting in here as it does appear to be now the only thing that is a bit of an issue with this is um with where i put the um the on off switch for it it does uh let's see can i get up here i can't yes so it does lock up this hopper um, which I think is not locked when the farm is running, but does lock afterwards. There's not too much in there, though, so I think we're probably okay. Um, I don't know if there's a better way I can do that, because this is where the on-off switch for the farm has to be. So, um, yeah, I'm okay with it. I mean, if that's all that's getting... Is there anything caught behind? No. I don't think it's going to be... Um, a huge deal to have that lock up and trap a few things behind there. Um, but, yeah, so now Skulk on demand, which is very nice. And apparently there are still Endermen coming through from up top. Ooh, yeah, there's definitely a few of them up here. Okay, well, um, they will disappear eventually. That's, oh, you know, that's potentially an issue. Because I wonder... I think I'm going to have to be careful um, with what I do surrounding this farm. Because I think right now, they have nothing they can do. They should be able to teleport down. Okay. So that's going to be a potential little bit of an issue. Because um, this part of the farm is not covered. I don't know why... 
they're not going for the Endermite, which is definitely still in there. But they've all given up. I think that's because they sensed me. So maybe if I go down here? I heard one of them come down. Oh well. I think I think we're good. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. Um I will need to get some tools to keep here so that um we can get this to go. But yeah, that is this project all done. That's another farm we can check off. And so the only thing left to do is finish getting all of our villagers set over here. I'm getting close. Um, I think I have around 30 villagers now. 20, 25 or so. Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, 27. All right, so 27. We should be able to get the rest of the way pretty quickly. Um, yeah, so I'm going to... and I, um, Still kind of stuck on what I want to do for um, little, uh, workstations for them, so I think I'm going to get that designed while I finish breeding them up, and then we're gonna have to wait until, um, I have all of the villagers that I need to be able to put them in their little areas, um, but we'll get that done, and I'll bring you back in a little bit. So while I am waiting for all of the rest of the villagers to fill up the population of this room, I've been working on a little bit of a design for all of the workstations. And so I thought that I might actually start to work on that because um, if my plan goes the way I think it will, um, I might actually be able to start sorting them into their... Um, respective areas while this process is still going on. So I want to do something um, with some blocks that are kind of otherworldly since that's, you know, kind of the theme of what we're going with here. So what I came up with, and it's very simple, um, but basically what we're going to do is build up a little thing like this. And I don't have enough iron trap doors, but then the workstation is going to go there. And they will be inside, and then we'll have glass on there, and then cap it off with a um, crystal up there. So I, that is the plan, and then these are just going to kind of go back to back. But what I want to do while they are up is I'm just going to snag this bed, and then I'm going to tuck it in there. So my hope is that one of the villagers will go and take the bed, and... Oh, I don't know if they'll be able to get out with the glass. You know what? We can take the glass out for right now. Um, I'm also, I don't think this is something that they can... I, yeah, I don't think you can suffocate on that. Um, it might just mess with their pathfinding. So you know what? Let's maybe take that out as well. And then they should be able to... Actually... Eh, no, we're going to leave that out. Um, but so I'm going to wait for another day to finish here. And then, oh, look, a little baby fell. Wonderful. I've been having to wrangle them all day. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking if one of them will go and take this, what I can actually do then is I can start um, separating them out so that um, I can get these built while the, uh, the breeding process is still going on. Um, and then once they are all, once I have all the beds filled and all of them are adults and have their professions, then I can go through at night and I can, um, break their beds, place their workstations down, um, and then, um, we'll be able to go from there. So, yeah, so I'm going to keep this process going and next time, next clip we should be, oh, 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 why, why are you taking damage? That was not good. Oh, because baby must have grown. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. I think I might need to change my setup here uh, so that nobody gets injured. All right. Um, anyway, I'm going to finish this up, and we'll see it when it's done. And our trading hall is complete. 
after much wrangling of villagers, I have all of them in their respective little areas here. I have traded with all of them at least once. I have also gone through and silenced them because it's very noisy in here. But yeah, this is all finished. Now I want to, in these corners, I want to like stack up some like blocks of redstone and blocks of lapis and things like that. Um, probably put some storage up here as well for some of the other things that they trade. But that's that'll be something that I'll work on off camera. Um, yeah, and I've been working to trade with villagers down below and just build up my emerald reserves for anything that we might possibly need. But yeah, that is this project done. And actually, I think we can go cross that off the board. Yes, indeed. So we can cross off our cleric trading hall and our skulk farm. And that is that. We are making progress. So, yep, happy with how things are coming along here and excited to keep working on these projects and continuing to fill the Star Destroyer with all the things we could ever possibly need. We need to build some more ships, so maybe in the next episode we will add a few more to this hangar. Guys, that is going to do it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe and make sure you click that little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.